Okay, regular viewers, welcome back. Thank you for all the support, all the likes, comments, and the subscribes, and all that sharing business that you guys are doing. We are nearly at 800 subscribers. I think we're at like, what, 20 away? Uh, maybe. I think so. So this week, uh, on this episode of, exciting episode of Regular Guy Lures, we're going to make sand a spikes. sand spike. Does that look exciting? There it is. Do you know what this is? A sand spike. Do you know what it does? Uh, it holds your boat in place. This little device will hold our boat from drifting out to sea. Can you believe it? It fits in the palm of your hand. And this will stop your boat from drifting away in a heavy wind or current. Isn't wow. that exciting? Uh, yes, it is. Well, that was mostly not true because uh, this little piece has to go with an entire shallow water anchor system, which is what we're making. But this was the crucial component. So if you remember a few videos ago, if you go back through your little Rolodex in your mind there, we made a, a push pole uh, that I got from the dumpster at work. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a great video. Apparently, people didn't like it. So uh, to honor that video that people didn't like, we're going to continue it further and finish our shallow water anchor by making this sand spike right here. So let's get started. Okay, so this is our push pole. This is the duck foot end. Um, if you don't know what that is, when you're pushing, it opens up. And then when you go to pull it out from the ground, it does this and it appears to be sort of like a duck's foot. If you've never seen a duck's foot, find a duck and turn it upside down. It will look like that, but orange mostly. Okay, so as we move on down the project here, and we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, and there it is. So our push pole is roughly how long? Uh, that's roughly 129 inches. How many feet is that? That is almost 11 feet. Almost 11 feet. So it's 10 feet what? 10 foot, um, hold on. What'd you say, inches? 128. Take 10. 10 okay, foot. It's got numbers on it just for you, buddy. 10 foot 9 inches. So if you said it was 128, it's 10 foot, 8 inches. Okay? Yes. Easy math. Okay. So yes, yeah, so our push pole is just over 10 feet long. And um, for this project, we're going to need to remove this right here. Because if we go back to the other end, to make a shallow water anchor, you need something to stick into the ground. And over here, on this end here, there is a threaded end. But you can't. You don't want to stick this in the mud. Um, this is going to be hard to kind of stick down in some of that stuff, and then that's all going to get filled with goo and mush and silt and grossness, Ew. right? Yes. Okay. So uh, we want a spike on this end. So we looked on Amazon, and the spike that we wanted was about a hundred dollars, which was uh, just about a hundred dollars more than I was going to spend on this project, because we like things quick, dirty, and what? Cheap. Okay. Just like the regular grandfather. So we come over here and we're going to remove our stainless steel hardware, which was a good investment now because after uh, however many months of this being used, um, it is still stainless steel and it is not rusted, so we can just take it off. Yay! Oops. Uh-oh. How about we don't mess up the screw head? There we go. And yes. it's just that easy. And we'll link the video uh, in the description below of how we made uh, this little beauty here. So, or how we acquired this little beauty here. Okay, so now we've got our threaded end on this end. So we need to make a copy of this, to make a mold of this, to pour lead for this, so that we can make a spike for that end over that away. Okay, so we're gonna use our air dry clay here to make a mold of this uh, threaded end okay so and uh as you saw i already made a spike so um we've done this process already but we're just going to show you how we did it here i filled in these little holes that i had drilled in it with the air dry clay okay just to get a little bit in there like so so i filled that in and uh just so that it's going to come out easier uh you'll see what I'm talking about later. That was Canadian for any Canadians watching. Okay, so I took my air dry clay and I wrapped it around like so. And I formed a little cup of it 
and this encompassed all the threads, okay? All right. Like so. So. How many times are we gonna say that? How many times are we gonna say like so? Until I'm done. Wow. Okay. There we go. And that is my clay forming skills. See, see, huh, huh? Oh. Right, very yeah. similar. All right, and then you let that dry on there. Okay, so we're just gonna let this dry on here. Um, and what we will form, this one was uh, a little bit longer, is a, is a cup like that, okay? And down there, it's hard to see, but uh, there are the threads, okay? And I forgot to show you, um, this is still wet, it hasn't dried because we just put it on there. But yeah, if you unscrew it, this one you can see better, we actually get a nice thread pattern right there. You just unscrew it off of here, right? Um, and then uh, and then you can let it set and dry. You don't have to let it set and dry on there. But you gotta be careful because it's malleable. So if you did this, uh-oh. Oh, oh no. Now we don't have any threads, right? Okay, so I let them dry on there, but you don't have to. So, but I just want to show you what the thread pattern looked like. You can, if I turn it this way a little bit, without you turning the camera there, Spielberg, okay? You can see the threads, okay? All right. Moving now, I could not pour uh, lead down into this. I didn't think that this was uh, strong enough and enough of a heat sink. I thought this would be uh, dangerous, scary, and no good to do that. But uh, what I did do, uh, pour into it was plaster. And I made this guy right here, all right? Uh, I didn't make this part until later. You'll see that coming up in the video, I promise. That's in the past, but will be in the future of the video. You following? Yeah, I'm following. We made this in the past, but it's in the future of the video. Probably need a flow chart. So anyway, I poured my plaster Oparis down in there, and I got these threads right here. When they came out, uh, I did have to clean them up a little bit, and you'll see a little bit of that coming up as well. Okay, this is impromptu and unorganized, but I don't know if my experiment will work again. I'm trying to open this mold of air dry clay with this little hammer. It is cracking. We may have done it. Holy smokes. Okay, let's just keep going slowly. Okay, we broke a little on the bottom, but I think that's a win because I think we can work with that. Not too bad. Okay, so we've got the bottom piece that we need. Now we need to construct a sand spike, and I don't think I'm gonna need, I was able to get this piece out. We can uh, glue it together on here, but I don't think we need to. Maybe I will just to see how it looks. So let me think on that and drop it on the floor, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I chose to try and super glue this back together. I don't know how well that's gonna work, but I'm gonna work on these right here. Um, let's try and file a little bit better definition uh, into those threads. Okay, before this gets more damaged, because I just dropped it, we'll just uh, put some super glue on this guy here. Okay, now I need to find that piece right there. Okay. For this next part of uh, the training, we're gonna need uh, to use our rotary tool, not a Dremel. Uh, and we're going to need eyes, ears, and a mask on the firing line. It helps if you put it on in the right order, perhaps. There we go. Mm. Uh, remember when people didn't know what PPE stood for? Those were the days. Helps if you plug it in. Turns out power tools need power.
Okay, so I've been test fitting it into the uh, push pole and it goes into up to here. So I can get two threads in. So I don't know if this is the part that's messing me up or not, but I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna make the spike part of it, glue that on, and then we will make the mold of this uh, because once it's made out of lead, it'll be a little more malleable. I'll be able to clean up those threads and maybe just lop this part off as waste if I don't like it. So, because uh, that got all loosey-goosey, I have no clue if that's even working, but it does go in that far and hold. So that's a pretty good idea or a pretty good deal rather, a good idea, whatever. All right, so I'm gonna put a post in here and build the spike off of that. See, it can look cleaner. See that, that's proof. Okay, so I've got a piece of junk wood in there. We're gonna put some super glue in it just to hold it in place. And that is gonna be the basis of our spike. Or the base of our spike. Air dry clay for an A. This was a pretty good uh, Christmas present there, family, so thank you very much. Probably don't need that much. I am not an artiste, so I have no clue exactly what I'm doing here. This is uh, known as winging it. I think that's too big of a spike. I gotta get a much steeper angle, I guess. And learning how to make cones today on regular guy lures. though because it's just gonna bend over okay I think we're gonna have to call that done enough as I keep working on it don't I always do this just stop regular guy Okay, so we're gonna have to let this air dry clay dry for a couple days here. And uh, that's gonna be our sand spike. Correction, after it dries, we're gonna seal it and then we're gonna make another plaster mold, the negative of this, and then we're gonna fill that with lead all the way up to here. So, all right, next time you see this, hopefully it will be dry. Okay, as you can see, our sand spike has dried. Maybe it looks more like a sand spike like this. But this is the model of our sand spike. I think the command decision is I'm going to do away with this piece of it and just have that piece of it here. But my more astute regular viewers will notice the uh, gap right here. And uh, we need to get rid of said gap. And we're going to use our friends super glue and baking soda. Uh, not in that order. I guess it's going to be baking soda and super glue. Probably need to shut the ventilation off just a skosh. So that is all filled in now. The excess but again to make a plaster mold of this we are gonna have to make this smoother uh, with a surface that the plaster won't stick to because if I tried to make a plaster mold of this I would make a do you know what a brick a brick that's right don't tell anybody that was the wrong rag oh. rookie mistake hate to see it yep hate to see it but hey it got clean okay so we're gonna take this off here uh no i don't yeah we'll leave that there just to hold on to for now i think we will take that off at the end but uh i'm going to apply wood glue to this guy to seal it because i think it'll seal it faster premium wood glue don't use the regular stuff here 
the reasons I like using the wood glue for something like this is uh, so this isn't the features of this aren't that terribly important and uh, the wood glue makes a very thick coating uh, one shot right out. So we're not going to be applying like any heat to this or anything like that just uh, making a one-off plaster mold two-part plaster mold that we can fill with uh, hot lead. And the wood glue self-levels pretty well on this stuff. It looks pretty clumped up, but when it dries, it's going to be a nice, even, thin coat, so. Okay, didn't think that through. Now I can't get it back in the clamp. All right, mostly back in the clamp. Let's let that dry, and I'll show you the results. Okay, regular viewers. So we're back with Operation Sand Spike. Um, our wood glue set up perfectly. Um, and uh, all we got to do is we're going to... I think I'm going to leave this piece on. And um, I'll use that as the sprue and cut it. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe that'll be a mess. I'm going to cut it off. Final decision. Final answer. Oh. It's cut off. Permanently. Now you can't change. Take oh, that. FF. Go take that. Okay, so this one, before it goes in the mold, I do want to put a nice coat of petroleum jelly on it. Uh, where'd you put that there? We were just using a little brush for the petroleum jelly. You know where that happened to go to? Okay, and that's why we put things back where they're supposed to go. this was not where it was supposed to be. That helps us find things, right? Yes. That way they never get lost if they're where they're supposed to be. Yep. Okay. Regular kids like me learn from that. Okay. Paint this around here nice and neatly. Can you do that for me? Uh, the whole thing? The whole enchilada. The whole enchilada. Or Uncle Chilada. Uncle? Okay. We clearly need to make more. Oh, I didn't talk about that. Yes, we're making the mold for this now, too. That's what that was. That's what that little adventure was right there. Sorry for all the uh, lawnmower noise or lawn care noise. And again, this is a really heavy object. If I just put it in here now, it'll just sink right to the bottom. So we need to wait for this to set up a little bit more. Okay, I believe our mold is set up. We've got this reasonably smathered with uh, petroleum jelly. This is going to be an exciting one, people. I've never done a lead casting this size. So very interested to see how this whole process works. Okay, enough talking. And the reason I made this one so big um, is because it's going to be a lot of lead. And I wanted to make sure it could absorb it. So this one probably got a little too hard, it looks like. Let's try and smooth it out while we can. What a weird feeling both hard and soft at the same time. Weird. Okay. Gross. Put two locators in there. Heck, I'm feeling saucy. We'll go for three. Three locators. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So hopefully this mold will act like a big heat sink to draw that uh, heat out of there and uh, cool it faster. Okay. Okay, regular viewers, our sand spike uh, mold half has set up. So let's get out our marbles here, our locators. I don't know why there was such a dramatic pause 
for that, sorry. Petroleum jelly, this dog, um, so that it doesn't stick. I'm sorry, I meant mold, not dog. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, when this plaster is harder, I'm going to make up some more. I'm at happen to be working on another mold right now, and then I will coat that over top of here and give it some more mass. So it's not going to be perfectly square, as evidenced by this lump right here, but I think it'll be okay. It won't be problematic. This one doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be effective. Okay, if I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. Apparently that's what I did. No, I mounded up a bunch on here because I was afraid that that was too thin uh, on that side. There we go. American mold never lets me down. So slippery. There we go. All right. Pretty good looking. Pretty good looking. It's not going to sit flat there, regular guy. You put a big bump on the one side of it. Prop it up like that. Okay. Oh! <laughs> That's not a good sign. There we go. That's much better. Much better. <laughs> yeah, what can you do? Okay, get that one out. Pretty good looking. So I'm just going to smack together like that. And you're just going to pour the lead down in there. This has to be extremely, extremely dry before you go pouring lead into it. Can't stress that enough. Lead. Uh, and uh, hot lead and water are going to explode when they reach each, meet each other. So make sure that this is totally dry. This is a mess, but it's a mess we're going to let dry. Not a perfect method, but we start the mold by holding it here in a well-ventilated area with our gloves and safety glasses. Stand back there, regular, regular camera. Okay. And we put it down and we let that smoke away. Go away. So we're going to use my ladle here. And that tops it off. Okay, so we got our first pour is done. Uh, still super hot. That's why we have our gloves on. If you come up here, our uh, we were using a ladle method here to uh, ladle it in to the uh, into the mold because this up here doesn't you can't get the mold under that little the uh, little spout there so we had to pour it in the ladle and then pour the ladle down into there so i don't know if that's going to be a cold cracking situation i never poured this much lead so i'll show you what we get when it's cool moving on we took all of that and we made a plaster of paris mold because it wouldn't be regular guy lures without a plaster of paris mold we poured a whole bunch of molten lead in here 
And uh, what did we get? Um, Let's two. see what we got. An unrefined piece of lead. Look at that. Wow. That's, right. that's a sand spike. That is uh, almost a sand spike. Yes, almost. Okay. Which is what brings us uh, up to speed here of, of how we got that guy. So we've got our spike. All right. And now, obviously, this spike does not look like that spike right there, does it? No, it does not. No, it does not. Okay. All right. So, again, that's our completed uh, sand spike, and this is our non-completed sand spike. So now we need to start the reforming process. Uh, we just take our little cutters here and cut down the side of this, cutting off all these little bits. Save these bits of lead. So, because we can pot. reuse them from the lead pot exactly. Okay, that's what our vice grips have to say about that. It's important with lead, though, you try to keep track of it. You don't want it everywhere, especially where your kids play and stuff like that. Uh, so, avoid lead poisoning. Because with children, turns out a lot of things just go right in their mouth. So, the mold has a defect. We got that little lump there. But it's very simple to cut off. Gonzos, just like that, okay? Yes. So, this is where it gets real fun. So we're gonna start taking this and trying to see what we need to remove off of this to get these threads nice. Obviously these little wings come off right here. This is the way you file out of Alcatraz. Yes, this is how you escape prison. Somebody sneaks a file into your cake when they drop off a cake for you, I guess. That's uh, apparently it's depicted in my childhood. Wasn't that from a uh, DuckTales episode? Uh, it was in a bunch of stuff. Now you can speed this process along with like a rotary tool, a Dremel, a uh, bench grinder, things like that, but then you get this lead uh, dust that's gonna come off of here uh, going everywhere. So this is a tedious process, it's not exciting, but through hours and hours and hours of, I guess this gets rid of the quick part, huh? Of this right here? Yes. But uh, through a lot of filing, you eventually work your piece of lead into there, down into it, and then it starts to screw in like this, okay? Um, because lead is malleable, what you can do once it gets tight, we put a pipe wrench on here. We grabbed it with our vice grips as well, Tighten. and just kind of back and forth with it, like so, until... You've got it down as far as you want. Okay, this one here, I don't know why I thought I could untighten it without the vice grips after I just did that with it. There we go. Okay. Yay. So back and forth a bunch, back and forth, back and forth, working in those threads, looking where it's worn and where it needs to be worn, and then cleaning it up with the file. So this is our finished product right here. Um, you can see it threads in all the way uh, down to the bottom. And... Um, I'm sure you could go further with it if you'd like. You could glue it in if you think it needs it, uh, like a thread lock or something like that. I don't think this is gonna go anywhere. We'll find out. I have a backup for when I am wrong and I lose this, but I'm just gonna screw it in. Hand tight as far as I can. Put on my vice grips here. I guess I should have got a, a more manly pair of vice grips than these ones. I think that's what I used the first time. Stand by while we get more manly vice grips. Here is a more manly set of vice grips that uh, my father and I found years ago at the bottom of the Merrimack River uh, during low tide one day. Look at that. What a neat story, huh? Wow. Yeah. That is very neat. Find all not sorts to, of stuff. And not to mention right here. When you're fishing. Okay. More manly set. There we go. Now that is one big combination. There we go. And I'm gonna call that tight enough. And that's how we got it mounted. Okay, sand spike first test. Yep, it spikes. Didn't bend. So now our project is complete. We've got a full push pole. We've got our duck's foot on this side. And if you travel with me all the way down to here, now we got a handy dandy sand spike. And as you saw, 
it uh, sticks in that mud over there. Um, so it'll perfectly stick down in a sand flat or a mud flat and hold our boat. This, uh, this is a nice fiberglass uh, reinforced pole here. And um, so we're gonna use this as our shallow water anchor. So this is a cheap and easy way to make yourself a shallow water anchor. Um, I was pretty surprised and pleasantly surprised with how well that all worked out. And um, yeah, I can't wait to get it out in the boat. I'll uh, show you a picture of that uh, when I finally do. Oh, there we go, shallow water anchor deployed. bit of current here in this very tiny little creek, a lot of wind, it's nice to be able to hold steady, it's a very sensitive area, and uh, you don't want to just go bulldozing through with your trolling motor, so it's real nice to be able to just hold right here. Perfect. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down in the, in the comments there, and please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and you stay regular.